Hi everyone, my name is Mark. I'm the co-founder of BCNL. BCNL is the community for blockchain, crypto and DLT startups and scale-ups in the Netherlands. This event is part of the BCNL webinar series. In this series, we provide you with relevant talks from blockchain entrepreneurs and experts. Make sure uh, to sign up for those webinars. They will be shared via our media channels. A uh, couple of important notes. Uh, we start right now. Uh, there's a, I think it's a 30 minutes uh, presentation, right? Yeah. Yeah, 30 minutes presentation. After that, we have uh, 30 minutes for Q&A and discussion so that we can end at five o'clock and drink a beer. Uh, please mute your mics and videos. Um, if there are any questions, you can uh, ask them uh, via the chat or at the end. Uh, and the webinar will be recorded and shared after, afterwards. Today, today BCNL Associates WordProof will share their solutions, how to fight online fake news and how it can be applied in the Corona times. Sebastian van der Lans uh, has a big heart for open source. In 2006, he co-founded Amsterdam's first WordPress agency, Van Ons, it's called, which is a leading digital agency now, uh, serving over 100 million page views a year. In 2019, Sebastian founded WordProof, uh, finalist in Europe's Blockchain for Social Good contest 2020, and Sebastian has a strong passion for improving the playing fields of publishing, SAO, and e-commerce. Uh, so no further notes from my side, so let's dive into it. Uh, Sebastian, the stage is yours. Thank you for this uh, introduction, uh, Mark. Um, yeah, and thanks for uh, Blockchain and Netherlands Foundation for organizing this webinar. It won't be a broad uh, introduction into marketing because there's a lot of content on marketing and blockchain in general. Today, we will deep dive in content and search and what it can mean, uh, yeah, what the combination of blockchain and those things will do. Um, if you have questions, drop them in the chat or use the Q&A feature. Uh, it's up to you and uh, we will do them during Q&A. If you have uh, burning questions, you can't listen any further, uh, please uh, feel free to uh, write that in the chat as well. Then uh, maybe we can answer them right away. Um, to start things off, I have a quick poll and take 15 or 20 seconds to uh, answer it. Uh, two questions about who you are, so we can calibrate the story a bit, and two questions on search and uh, marketing. Here we go. They should pop up now. Uh, Two weeks ago, I did a webinar with 60, 70 people and 90% answered in 15 seconds. It's a, really a powerful tool. Does it work? Can you see the... Um, Ah, first answers are coming in. Uh, many people from the blockchain space. That's good. That makes so we can dive deep. Over 50% voted. Let's take a few more seconds. Ah, someone who's not from the blockchain space and uh, yeah, not the intention to get into it. Three, two, one, and the poll. I can share the results now. Uh, yeah, most of you work in the blockchain space. Um, one does that the intention to be there, uh, aim to uh, learn more about blockchain and marketing, blockchain marketing content and search, just curious. Uh, here, what percentage of all purchases start in the search engine? Most say 70 or 80%. And here, what percentage of the Google searches do not result in a click to a site or shop? Most people say 20%. Okay, I'll answer those in the talk and now I will uh, share my screen. Mark, I need you then to confirm that uh, my screen is shared. Can you see the presentation, Mark? I can see it. 
Okay, perfect. Um, okay, blockchain and digital marketing, and we will do a deep dive in content and search. And if you have questions, put it in the chat. Uh, quickly, a bit of my background. I've been running uh, the biggest WordPress agency in the Netherlands for over 13 years, founded in 2006. Today, it's a leading digital agency with 25 people. Uh, my co-founder is running it as I'm doing work proof since the start of last year. Uh, WordPress, you've heard about it probably. WordPress is a textbook example of how a community of nerds is bigger than any corporate in the content management market. Uh, being in that space for 13 years, we did a lot of learnings on how blockchain or at least on how open source software plus communities can uh, disrupt the corporate models. So um, I think the WordPress experience um, can bring, uh, the WordPress community has a lot of experience that can be beneficial for the blockchain world. So it's an interesting combination, all discovering the open source world. Um, a bit about the adoption of WordPress, uh, 2011, it was 13%. Today, it's, um, yeah, today on April 2020, it's 36%. And what you see is it's the biggest content management system in the world. But also, um, if you see uh, WordPress is open source, Joomla and Drupal are open source, but Squarespace is the first closed source solution with just 1.5%. And how is this measured? This is the top 1 million sites in revenue. So uh, the uh, number one open source solution is more than 20 fold bigger than the closed source solution, the number one closed source solution, Squarespace, by now. That's an interesting development. Why is that mass adoption? Because, and that's my, my belief, but in uh, the start of the last decade, or no, in the 2004, 2005, it was one of the first open source content management systems where the, what you see is what you get editor. So without the need of a programmer, you could publish on the internet. By then it was mind blowing. So adoption took off rapidly. Um, what does an open source ecosystem or the WordPress ecosystem look like? On the one side, you have the value extractors, the people who want to have access to the best technology for free. It's inclusive, uh, it's user-friendly. Innovation is fast. For example, integrations with Google, you can just download it, it's updated. There are full-time teams working on it and you have the ownership of your own data. On the other side, you have the WordPress developers. Uh, my agency is a WordPress development agency and uh, to give you an example of how marketing and open source can work is um, my company made a plugin and it's called the WordPress GDPR compliance plugin. That was in 20, when GDPR was coming, a bit before that. We saw that people, customers in the agency didn't want to pay for anything uh, related to GDPR. Uh, because it doesn't give you more productivity, it's costly, uh, yeah, and there's no sales benefit. So that's why we thought, okay, we will make a plugin, an open source plugin to help uh, people become GDPR compliant. Invested 75,000 uh, euros in hours in it, and what we saw is over 1 million downloads uh, were, were happening, and today it has over 100,000 active users as a problem in almost every agency, especially before COVID-19, was, hey, how will we uh, find developers? Developers are really hard to recruit. But then, because we have this open source plugin, we're making open source software as kind of having your uh, resume on public. Uh, so it made us as agency a way uh, nicer place to work, uh, which helped us a lot in recruitment, but also in sales. If the question was, hey, how do you uh, GDPR, do you know a bit about it? Oh, we have a plugin with over 1 million downloads. In that way, um, you, yeah, it's, it's a sales argument and a recruitment argument. That's a bit about how to market, how we use open source software for marketing. Um, and WordPress for me is in a way the proof that blockchain can and will work. What did it prove that open source code and a community is a market leader in this way they democratized publishing. That's the slogan from uh, WordPress uh, as well. So yeah, you can say kind of a mission accomplished. Then years ago, um, I saw this quote by Brandon Bloomer. 
And it said, in five years from now, if you don't timestamp your articles on the blockchain, you're going to be considered a fraud. Uh, blockchain will become part of best practices, is what he stated. And if you don't push your content on chain, you'll be seen as a revisionist. What are you hiding? Uh, so that's exactly what we're proof did it's kind of a unique fingerprint of the content and its revisions and put that simply on a blockchain in 1991 uh, blockchain was invented for time stamping documents on that blockchain to prove the integrity so the use case of word proof is the simplest uh, in fact you can say the initial uh, use case of blockchain um yeah and today we dive in how that can fight fake news, revisionism, plagiarism, and improve the game of search engine optimization. I have a short movie about, a short movie about a word proof. It's one and a half minutes, and it starts now. I hope you hear it. Let me know if, it's, if the sound works. Ah, I hear that there's no sound. Sorry about that. I'll share I'll share the video after. Um, okay, I'll share that video after. Here you see a fragment from NewsEar, a published uh, or television program, explaining how WordProof can be uh, used to fight fake news, how revisions of content can be compared. And um, yeah, here you see, um, you'll see it in the next one. Sorry, uh, I'll sh this was the marketing video. I'll share it in the, um, yeah, in the show notes or Mark and I will share it afterwards. Um, what it does is it makes a fingerprint of content and puts that on the blockchain. As 90% uh, of you is a blockchain, uh, working in the blockchain space, I uh, consider this as, uh, yeah, I bet you know how this works. Uh, what does it look like? Here's an article, you scroll down, you click on uh, timestamp certificate, you can see the certificate and you can uh, compare revisions of the content. And here you see in green what's added, in red what's removed. That's a timestamp certificate proving to a human. Uh, yeah, it makes it checkable, verifiable that you didn't tamper with the content. Uh, in some cases, the revisions as well. Some publishers choose to uh, make the revisions comparable and others say, uh, yeah, that they don't want that. Some stats, uh, here you see on the top, the blockchain certificate. On the right, you see some stats on adoption. Today, over 200,000 real pieces of content are timestamped and um, over 60 million pages or page views with that link to the certificate are uh, published or are, uh, yeah, are, um, are, are presented to people. That doesn't mean that they all clicked on the link, but over 60 million people uh, had page view with the certificate link on it. So that's, uh, yeah, some stats on the first 10 uh, months of uh, after the launch of WordPress. The launch of WordPress was at the fully loaded WordPress conference uh, in a, at the well, I was doing the keynote for uh, 2,500 WordPress developers in June last year. Um, it started with, uh, as a simple plugin, uh, timestamping content um, for WordPress. And uh, it started with a plugin where you can manually place a timestamp from your blockchain wallet. Then the big publishers asked us and e-commerce parties asked, hey, can we uh, timestamp automatically? Because uh, yeah, it, it's a hassle. 
blockchain is still quite hard to grasp for someone who's an editor, who's not in the blockchain space. Um, so one step by step, a whole ecosystem unfolds. This is the ecosystem we propose. When identity solutions make sure, we will integrate them in the system. Uh, so on the left, you see the industries. Uh, then you see the platforms we timestamp with. Then we have um, uh, mainly or automatically placing it. And on the right, that's where we will dive deeper into marketing, is the verification. With the blockchain certificate, uh, humans can verify that information. That's cool, but are there more, you, not only humans, but machines who can also uh, use that verification? Let's have a look at how search engines change marketing as we know it today. In our WordProof journey, discussing it with over a hundred of people, we came to the conclusion, uh, for example, by talking to online marketeers, that Google, in many cases, is a proxy of trust. And I will uh, explain on the next slide what I mean with that. And in my journey, I came uh, to the guy, uh, Jonah Alderson, and he came to the conclusion he's, he's truly a legend on search engine optimization. And um, he had a presentation which is called what happens when everyone's website is fixed? If you want to learn about uh, search engine optimization in the new era, um, this presentation, I link it from the presentation, I will uh, share it afterwards, is the go-to place uh, in depth about how they, he's working at uh, Yoast, Yoast is search engine optimization software for over 10 million WordPress sites. And uh, he's explaining how search is changing. Um, what we learned is Google is kind of a proxy of trust. So if someone tries to mislead, we trust Google to punish the villain. If a site is not compatible for your device, we want Google to filter it out. And if someone is a bad actor, we expect Google to tell us. And if a site is not secure, we rely on Google to tell us. Maybe you, uh, I'm pretty sure if you use Google Chrome, then you see, um, uh, this box very often. Hey, this site is not, not secure uh, because there's no SSL or no HTTPS. We rely on Google as our proxy of trust. This is the answer. Uh, many of you had it right. 71% of the consumers begin their journeys by using a search engine to discover new products and services. What does that mean? This means that search is now how we spend and a user research is based on its problems or needs and what they see there, what they find there informs what happens next. So when they search, you want them to see your site, whether it's organic or with advertising, you want them to come to your website. But then uh, what you see here on the right, many of you recognize it increasingly. What you see is that um, you can do the thing you're trying to search for. And those slides are from uh, Jono's presentation. Go watch the full presentation. But increasingly, you can do the thing you're trying to search for already in the results. And sometimes it's how-to content. Sometimes it's product information. Sometimes it's a stock price. Uh, sometimes it's news feeds. But you recognize the screens on the right. They're called rich snippets, and what they do is they are replacing the conventional search result. Instead of a list of links to choose from, you have them on the bottom, um, the answers are already given in Google. And uh, you could say, okay, uh, clear, um, this is beautiful, it's a great user experience, but Google's intent, that's how Yono summarizes, is to show the best results for me. That's always, as a searcher, that's always their intent. That best result is rarely a text link in a list of results to a web page. These uh, formats, these rich snippets make that our solutions or answers as a searcher can be found in Google instead of linking to your websites. So users don't need to click on that, which is a big shift in marketing. It's better for the user, but what does it mean for your site? The future of how we search, browse, and buy maybe is more at Google and less at your website. And here is the answer. And to me, this was a really shocking thing. Um, half of all searches on Google do not end up on a website. So you could say, why are we building websites anyway? 
or the second question would be how uh, can we make sure that our website will be uh, represented in those rich snippets because if we are not there we're missing 50 percent of all the searches does that make sense think about it it's it's uh, for me it was really shocking that this was 50 percent already in 2016 it was 44 percent 2017 it was 47 percent the data is from spark toro and um, the needs of those users, yeah, they are fulfilled in Google already. And remember, 70% of all the purchase decisions start with search. 50% of them never get further than just the search engine. So uh, then he goes further and he said, hey, this is the technology stack you want. Um, the way to communicate with Google to feed them the data for the, um, for the rich snippets is called schema.org and structured data. If your site uses or implements structured data, schema.org really deep, then your, uh, your uh, content and your website can be crawled in a way that Google is able to make the, uh, the rich snippets from your website. So uh, he summarizes, Google is the platform where the audience is and searches. Uh, he mentions WordPress a lot. They do WordPress, but he has a great argument for it. Google has a team making, for example, uh, they're working on AMP. That's accelerated mobile pages. Uh, I won't dive deeper in that, but Google for it if you want to know or go to Jono's presentation. But then you have SiteKit. SiteKit is a suite from Google itself. They have a, a team of multiple people working full time on the integration of WordPress and Google for the, the search console and everything is brought into your website. It's an open source tool. And then on top of that stack, you have Yoast, Yoast SEO. This stack of WordPress, SiteKit, and Yoast combined with the new editor of WordPress makes that you can output out of the box all the uh, information um, and present it in a way that search engines can read it. Normally, if you want to implement this on other platforms, it will take you tens of thousands of euros a year to do this right. So um, that's an uh, dive into it it's to do so, uh, so marketing is changing search is playing a bigger and bigger role and more and more zero click results are getting in so the only way to be considered uh, to be considered as a brand as a company as a website is to output your data correctly and structure data um, what does that have to do with timestamping you may ask uh, here, so Google's intent is to show you the best result for a user at any given point in time, given their understanding of the whole internet and me. The best result is rarely a list of text links that I have to choose from. So uh, Yono also, he said it's really hard. He said Google's conventional search results are temporary dysfunction. Wow, go for structured data. Problems in SEO today. Um, one of them is changing the date. If you change the date of an article, uh, it's in a way the simplest form of search engine fraud um, because if you change the publication date in many cases this bumps you higher in the search result directly in a way you tampered with the data with um, timestamping in place you can prove that you didn't tamper with the data duplicated content number two think of the following situation a small site publishes a high quality content soon after a bigger and better ranking website republishes the content, getting it indexed earlier than the small site. And a search engine may now wrongly consider the small site a copycat instead of the other way around. Even there with timestamping, you can prove that you were first. And then number three is a more uh, complex form of fraud, uh, cloaking it's called, where um, in a way your website discovers that, hey, this is not a person visiting, but a search engine visiting. And um, the search engine uh, is recognized and other content is presented to that search engine. Um, it's yeah, also there with timestamping, you can prove it's the same content. So the question is, um, with the timestamp certificate, a user can verify the integrity of your content. That's all in the blockchain certificate. But uh, will it make sense 
to present the schema.org and the structured data uh, timestamp, or will it make sense to present the timestamp, so the proof of integrity, to the search engines as well? The answer, the answer is absolutely yes, because you can prove that you didn't tamper with that data, solving all the three problems on the previous slide. And um, that's exactly what we work on. So we made an open source protocol um, uh, working with many guys in the SEO industry in a few weeks a massive uh, article uh, will be published on the biggest SEO blog in the world uh, one of them and uh, it's about timestamping blockchain timestamping in the uh, schema.org and uh, technically it's all implemented already so if you start timestamping content today um, even if they uh, officially recognize it later, uh, it makes sense that you already made that timestamps. And uh, yeah, th that's an uh, important part of that ecosystem. So humans can verify, but also uh, social media and search engines. All is in the structured data in the schema.org format already. And we're doing the political process of getting it in schema.org already. And especially if blockchain identity, the self-sovereign identity is figured out in the coming months, years, um, then an identity can be tied to your blockchain account. And in that way, you uh, can prove that it was really you who did it. In the Q&A, we can dive deeper in, um, in especially fake news, how blockchain identity content timestamps will result in a world where, uh, where you can filter fake news out without censorship. Uh, but I'll, I'll leave that one for Q&A if you're interested in that. And uh, this completes the ecosystem. So making those timestamps in a totally standardized way, there's no secret at all in how it all works, making those timestamps available to search engines as well. Uh, so not only to the visitor, but also to search engines. And this is uh, exactly in time, the presentation blockchain in digital marketing with a deep dive in content and search.